Welcome to yet another Zoom call organized by Jungle Bells. Jungle Bells is an exclusive women's wildlife group. We are into wildlife related activities, conservation and wildlife tours. Before we begin, I would like to request all of you to turn your cameras off and switch off your microphones, please. If you have any questions for the guests, please type them in the chat box and we will address them after her talk. Also, if you want to receive further communication from us about our events, please type in your email addresses and phone numbers in the chat box. To introduce our speaker for today, I will hand it, hand it over to Aarti. A very good morning to all our viewers. A little bit about our uh, guest of today. Uh, Akansha is a wildlife filmmaker and an activist who documents stories about conservation issues in the country. Her latest project, Pass Crossing Forests, talks about the grave issue of wildlife road kills in and around national parks. And as a part of the film's impact campaign, she's involved in creating awareness and outreach about the same. They are also a Jackson Wild Summit Fellow from 2020, and they're well known for their project, Tangle Seas. So, uh, Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Akansha and let's hear about this very important topic of uh, road kills from her. Hi, Akansha. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Should I share my screen now then? Yes, you can start. Okay, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. All good. Yeah. Um, so a little trigger warning because this is a slightly graphic topic to address. There will be some videos and some photos which might be a little disturbing, but the conservation issue by itself is a little disturbing. So sometimes we cannot avoid some things. And um, I've just put a trigger warning just in case um, it affects somebody too much. I will let you know when that slide will be. So you can maybe excuse yourself for that moment. But there is just one slide with disturbing pictures. The rest of it is just going to be a little bit audiovisual in nature. Right. So um, I'm going to play a video and then we will discuss it. Right, so imagine you are crossing a major highway just like this. Recall how anxious and scared it makes you. And now imagine such a road through your own house. Sometimes there's a highway dividing the water hole, cutting through their migration routes, and sometimes it's even dividing their territories into two halves. Um, so, um, and when their territory is divided into two halves. It also leads to something called inbreeding because they have so much of inconvenience that um, they tend to um, start mating with their own um, family members. And that becomes very problematic because then there is no genetic diversity. Um, to the right, you can see the logo of our project, which is Fast Crossing Forest. And what we've done with this imagery is that we've spoken about um, how when the leopard is in its home, the forest, it is its true self, which is to the right, and then the camouflage. Um, when it's at home, it's in camouflage, but when it steps out on the road, the safety of the forest goes away, and they become prone to um, human activities and fatalities because of that. Roads also open up forests to mining, poachers, garbage, and further exploitation. So that is what the logo is trying to depict here. Um, right. Okay, so uh, if you can see these three images, these three maps show us that the leopard movement in India versus the road network that we have. 
if you look at image number one, it shows that the protected areas and corridors where uh, it shows protected areas and corridors, while the second one shows major movement zones and the third one shows road networks. If you look closely, there is a national highway or state highway passing through almost all of these regions. I'll just leave it on for a second so that you can. Right. Um, India has the second largest network of roads in the world and the pace of highway construction in the country has touched over 37 kilometers every single day and the target is to make it 100. But where do you think the space that these highways are getting from? It is from wild spaces. It is from parks. It is from protected areas. Not only the big cats, but almost all animals are victims of vehicular traffic and they become roadkill. The slang for the word roadkill, if you Google it, is one that has failed and is no longer worthy of consideration. If this is the definition, you can imagine what the attitude of the stakeholders is going to be like. And like we can see in these reports, um, in these articles, that there is almost one leopard dying every two days. And that is what is being documented, um, which is probably like on a national or state highway or a popular road. There are a lot more which go unnoticed. Right, sorry, I forgot the trigger warning. Um, the next slide has disturbing images. If anybody is affected by that. Um, so how bad is the problem? Not only forest areas, but also roads in the buffers, corridors, outskirts of cities, as well as smaller roads bifurcate that bifurcate from state highways should be considered for mitigation and studied. Smaller animals avoid bigger roads and are generally fast moving compared to the bigger animals, uh, compared to maybe the big cats on the highways. And they are... Um, so the big, bigger animals are easier to spot, but these smaller animals move very fast and they generally don't use uh, the bigger roads and national highways. So, um, so this is the problem. What is the solution? Making underpasses and overpasses at all major highways as well as smaller roads would be a solution. To make them keeping in mind the behavioral patterns of animals that are supported that are supposed to be using it. Like you cannot um, use the same uh, rules for the underpass for a crab versus a bear versus a tiger, for example. You can fence the rest of the road and create a pathway leading to the underpass or overpass. Once the animal knows this, they will use it. Uh, so there's something called bypass road, which is the second point. One of the ways to avoid wildlife road kills is not have highways through forest areas at all. Instead, create a bypass that is around the city and that way closer and um, the vehicles and people from the city have closer access to it as well. Speed limit. There is a set speed limit of 20 kilometers per hour in forest areas, but, the, uh, but there is not proper monitoring of it unless there is some major incident. Gypsies and tourist vehicles sometimes speed at night, risking all the big and small animals using these pathways. There should also be a strict fine and punishment for the same for road kills, uh, which is basically an animal hit and run case. Documentation. Most times a rash driver doesn't even stay back to look at the state of the animal unless there is a crowd witnessing the same. There should be a better, faster system of, okay, this is the next one. There should be a better and faster system of reporting and documentation of roadkill for and by the NHAI, which is National Highway Authorities of India, local police and forest department. Several apps were made and there are still a few of them functioning at present, but their capabilities of data management are not robust enough to support the magnitude of usage. Um, we need a lot of data management and we need a lot of backend work to be able to sustain those apps. And a lot of these NGOs and government organizations have collaborated and created those apps, but they are not able to handle that bandwidth. Almost always the department is informed after it is too late. And unless there is an NGO in the area, 
medical assistance to the struggling animal is not as immediate as required in this situation. Um, what is happening now? The NHAI wanted to convert National Highway 44, which is now known as NH7, to a four-lane highway near the Kanha Pench Corridor. As a part of NTCA, which is National Tiger Conservation Authority, <laughs> as general EIA, which is Environment Impact Assessment, every project needs the green light from all stakeholders in that region or about that conservation issue. So the local NGOs did not grant this permission and eventually by the order of the Supreme Court, National Highway 7 would be allowed to expand into four lanes only if they elevated the highway and created a wildlife underpass with support and suggestion from the forest department. So if you can see this, they had to elevate it and um, they made it a camouflage color so that it's easier. It feels more like a part of nature according to the forest department. There is also another underpass supposed to be built on the Mumbai Nagpur Highway, but these are slower, but the rate of the construction is slower and far lesser compared to the statistical frequency of how many road kills are happening. Right, so there is a quick video uh, by the ACF of Pench MP and um, he's just telling us about the underpass. Jo, ये नेशनल हाईवे गुजरा है उसके लिए मिटिगेशन के लिए काफी जो है मीटिंग हुई और सभी के जो व्यू लिए गए थे इसमें जो हमारे रोड बना है उसमें 14 अंडरपासेस दिए गए हैं और एनिमल जहां जहां से क्रॉस ज्यादा करते थे वहीं वहीं पे हमने अंडरपासेस दिया है कि जिससे हमारा एनिमल हमेशा वहां से निकलता जाए इसमें 30 मीटर से लेके 1400 मीटर लंबाई तक के अंडरपासेस दिए गए हैं और जिनकी हाइट जो ग्राउंड लेवल से 5 मीटर का है अगर कभी एलिफेंट को भी जाना पड़े तो जा सकता है जो I hope that was audible. Yes, yes, it was. Okay. Right, so... Why do you think wildlife road kills are getting worse each day? Uh, the answer lies in your attitude. When somebody asked about road kills, uh, wildlife road kills, uh, and why they are getting increased, the first realistic answer is because nobody cares. See, in this country, to, uh, because I am a civil engineer also and associated with uh, many of development uh, things, the articulate tracks of development, which are mostly for humans, like highways, roads and many things, flyovers and what you will call so expressways and super expressways and all those things, even railways for that kind of thing. Means of transportation is one branch of civil engineering. In India, to my knowledge, every year, more than 3 lakh people get dead on road accidents. 3 lakh. Okay. This, I really wonder about the official figure of official creativity of it, but it's a, to my knowledge, it's by Indian Road Survey and that uh, highway history uh, something research to uh, in New Delhi. Equal number or twice the number must be getting seriously injured or crippled for the life. And there must be equal numbers which are not registered even. So imagine nearly 7 to 8 lakh humans getting died or permanently disabled in road accidents. Pune, I can assure you, in Pune every month 300 people die on road accidents. Fine, they must be uh, driving billions. But do not expect uh, wild animals to driving uh, vehicles or that kind of thing. Their only mean to use the road is by their feet. You you can't uh, see you can't expect an elephant uh, died in a road accident by driving a uh, car, or you don't expect to read the news uh, a tiger got dead by driving a truck and collided with another uh, truck which was driven by some leopard and that kind of thing. Okay, so they all but they 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 also use the road some way or other. They try to avoid as much as but. Imagine a country where a person bangs a human crossing the road and run away. Do you expect this country's people will stop or care for some other animal uh, crossing the road? That's 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 why that this is the, the entire reason of this film where we, we are working you and me and your team 
is about our attitude nothing that that, that is what some that, that is what has to be highlighted otherwise i i if you can care imagine if you i am sure if you can reduce some road kills or if you make people aware about road kills of wildlife that attitude will reflect in saving lives of humans also who are crossing the road okay so that's why it is important. So, how can we help? Um, helping create awareness would be one. Learning and imparting awareness in others about this conservation topic, which is largely ignored. And whenever, even when we're on a road in the city, we look at maybe um, a roadkill of a dog or of a cat, we just ignore it and we're like, okay, this is an eventuality. But it is not normal and it is not supposed to be normal because this is not a a uh, threat to the animal species wild or domestic it's not a natural th threat it's a human induced problem so if it's a human induced problem there should be a human induced solution second thing would be signing petitions and raising your voice um signing petitions and participating in protests or movements because like the underpass at nh7 that was possible only after the supreme court order and people's movement can actually get a lot done. You and I and everybody, even one signature makes a difference. So that is one way how we can participate because at the end of the day, the highways, um, all of those stakeholders have to give permission. And in the larger scheme of things, we are also stakeholders. Um, next would be write to your local authorities. Find out more about the acts, laws, your rights, and the responsibilities towards our non-human cohabitants. Drive cautiously when passing through a forest area or area where animals are known to cross. Be mindful of the possibility of a small as well as big animal suddenly crossing your path. Keeping, keep your lights on, keep the beams high at night, and your speed slow. Obviously, there will be boards, there will be indication that this is a crossing uh, and usually they have the symbol or the picture of what kind of an animal it is, if it's a deer, if it's a, a rabbit or hare or if it's a tiger crossing or an elephant crossing, you would have a picture of it in most cases if it's a regular predictable path and then you can, um, I mean, anyway, you should be careful, but you can alter your driving uh, based on that. Avoid driving through forest areas at night altogether and learn first aid and understand what you're supposed to do and who you are supposed to call in case of a roadkill. Uh, with our project, for example, we will be having a petition later on once the film comes out, which will be to demand uh, the Supreme Court uh, to sanction or require all the new highways that are made to compensate wildlife in one way or the other right so i will quickly play this um this video is a witness to say that animals are not crossing the road but the fact is the road is crossing the forest because that was their home and we are supposed to have a forest cover 30 percent i think is the statistic uh, but how much are we actually following that on in reality
so that is all my presentation was because i personally feel like there is not enough awareness at the moment for us to um make an overall change so we need to start with just addressing that this is a problem right uh, if there are any questions thank you akansha that was uh, you know truly eye opening uh, the last film especially that you just showed us with you know so many animals uh, crossing and uh, the other thing the the leopard uh, statistic that you shared also was like really really disturbing i mean that's a lot of road kills uh, so i wanted to ask you that is it just that the leopard uh, kills are documented and then the rest like you know even uh, Uh, do tigers and you know sloth bears and these kind of animals and deer obviously i'm guessing do get affected but is it just that there's statistic are not recorded or you just haven't presented it to us or um statistics are recorded but the leopard mortality was the highest which is, is the highest okay we've uh, included them and it is the highest because leopards stay very close to human habitats uh because they really like consuming dogs that is one of their favorite food items right um that is why they're very clo close to human settlements and that is why they're more prone to being on uh, highways and on the areas which we use yeah so yeah i mean awareness yes but you know the progress has to happen as well along with this so the roads passing through the forests i think uh i mean i don't know if there can be an option to that yeah underpasses is one uh, like the new construction that's being done of course uh, can have that as a solution where you have underpasses um, but the old construction that's already been done the old roads that are already there uh, they are going to stay so i think uh, what is the so just raising awareness i think is the main solution you feel or can anything else be done as well right like nh44 became nh7 so in situations like that you could demand that sort of a change right um you know wherever the reconstruction is happening is one of the things and just um you can make a overpass you can always make a overpass if not an underpass overpass yeah that's what i meant yeah overpasses are uh, probably the best solution from what we saw uh in the pench uh, tiger reserve what they have done uh, but for the existing roads i think just driving carefully and just being aware that you know there are animals crossing and that's the only really solution identifying it as a problem because we really don't it's just ignored and people just move away from that so how did you get interested in this akanksha i mean it's a very niche topic first of all and uh, i'm assuming you were already interested in wildlife before you uh, got interested in this uh, particular topic or right i work with uh, wildlife conservation since i think 4 5 years now but uh, i got interested in this topic because if you look at the statistics an animal like the leopard which is a schedule one species the tiger no animal um, every animal is a victim rather you know even the small ones even the right. one, and it is a human induced problem and it is very graphic like leopards have brain hemorrhage there is if you i have been um, people keep sending those pictures to me and they are very traumatizing to look at because yes. they are they completely turned and twisted and i thought that um this needs to be addressed okay. um so do you have a like is your i guess educational background in this field or did you just get interested i studied uh, media and communication okay. as part of my graduation but they don't really teach you wildlife film making or right. yeah. so it was something i learned over the years so film making i guess came from that i mean yeah I because mean, you have a background in how to hold the camera and edit came from that but <laughs> telling stories is something when we meet people that's how i learned that yeah. i think himangi you wanted to yeah i was just going to ask about the film making but uh, it's a lovely and inspiring thing uh, and shani i myself i've been associated with forest but um, any third person also watching this right now and we have a lot of people watching on facebook also so i'm sure uh, you've created that stir in them you know to actually be um, very vigilant while you're you know driving or 
um, on these kind of roads and every life is uh, important as we say so is of wild animals it's not be treated in a very very this thing so very noble work um, let us see if we can uh, take it ahead and we'll surely you know also be uh, forwarding this recording of uh, we upload it on the YouTube. So we'll be sharing it with uh, a lot of people and creating that kind of awareness. So we hope to, you know, work with you and, you know, really go ahead with this and make you achieve your goals. So that's all I wanted to say. Yeah. So Akansha, you're having, uh, you're working on a film, right? About this uh, topic. And uh, so when do you hope to complete it? And October, hopefully. Uh, we've been working on this topic for the last two years, almost two years, but something on the other keeps happening. And uh, also the other project that I was working on, which I think uh, was mentioned, Tangle Seas, we are on the fourth year of impact campaign. So once you start talking about this, there is never really an end to any of this because still that problem is close to solved or, you know, people still don't know about ghost nets. So this is just like the beginning it's going to be a longer journey but okay. film is just one part of it the larger um, idea is to create awareness okay. like Hemangi said you know a lot of people who are not even associated with forests or not who are not uh, team wildlifers if they watch this just out of humanity I'm sure it's going to create a, a lot of stir in people and they will hopefully be more uh, vigilant even if you don't visit a forest the road kills that are happening around the cities even that is all you know uh, ho hopefully they'll be more vigilant on that uh, Sanjay Deshpande wants to know uh, he wants you to let people know what makes you take this up as your career and uh, what are the challenges that you've faced during you know maybe uh, making of your film you've done a film in the past uh, actually tell us about that as well I, when I read your bio you said uh, Tangle Seas is a film that you've made. So can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Um, I will ask this question again. I, um, I took this up as a career because I was always like, I was that kid who grew up watching National Geographic and, you know, Discovery National Geographic and that sort of content. But if you look at all the films right now, there is not enough documentation of conservation. Um, and these, like you mentioned, that this is a niche that is even worse. There is nobody talking about it because it's not pretty looking. It's not expensive looking. It, it doesn't get as many eyeballs as you would want. You know, it's just easier to show maybe Bandavgad or Paint is the beauty that it is. But looking at the statistics of situations, forgetting everything else, it is quite bad. So I thought that I should do a mix of both. I should work. If I'm working... Um, like there was Planet Earth and during those 10 years or 5 years that they filmed Planet Earth 1, they also made Planet Earth the future, which was three episodes which documented by BBC, which documented how the landscape has changed. So the impact campaign with my projects is something that I do. I mean, it's already a conservation issue, but then having long term changes in the film actually doing something uh, is where I moved to my, my career to this part of it. And the challenges uh, would be firstly to make people care about what you're doing because you can just watch a film and getting them to watch the film and sign the petition is a whole thing. With Tangle Seas, uh, for example, it is about seafood and ghost nets and discarded fishing nets. So something that I got very often was, hey, I live in a city. I don't need seafood. I don't care. Why should I care about this? You know, right. or I can just, or one of us can just be like, oh, I don't drive. Why should I care about road kills? You know, so it's just that um, I won't say ignorance, but just um, you are so separated from these issues. You don't realize, like, you know, if, if you look at the tree outside, there are birds living on it. There are parakeets living on it. You know, you share there's mangoes, there are snakes, you share close proximity with wildlife more than you realize and you don't even acknowledge that because of the lifestyle that you live, you know, you are in your space and um, even Sanjeevani, I think, works with that principle, right? Um, you know, like you have to provide space to wildlife because we're sharing that um, area with them. So we don't realize a lot of these things and that is a problem and you will not take action about something unless you care about it. So awareness converts into caring about it. That is one of the problems and also access. Um, a lot of the times 
these stakeholders, like we always say with fishing nets, we would just be like ban the nets, ban these vehicles over there, you know, create a ban at six o'clock, create a ban at um, whatever time you want, things like that. And banning is not that simple because it's a stakeholder that you are looking at, you know, the people who use that road in this case for example you cannot just cut access to it because it will still happen but it will happen illegally you know so whenever any decision is taken with that landscape everybody should be included even the most vulnerable one like in this case would be the communities that live around it the people if you say don't make a road over here people will be like but i need to move around my village needs accessibility you know so whenever you make those decisions you need to include everybody which hardly happens people in cities make decisions for what's happening in the coast, for example. So those are two major challenges that I faced. I can't hear you. I said that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, banning certain things is never the solution, you know, to anything. It uh, All parties involved have to be taken into consideration. And hopefully that is, uh, that change is coming about now in India. So, uh, yeah, like Amangi said, you know, thank you very much for the film. It was very eye-opening and um, I think Sanjay would like to say a few words. Hi, Akansha. Hello. Hi, congratulations. And uh, as I, uh, this, uh, I'm, am I audible? Yes. Okay. As I uh, message two, three of you, just, uh, don't get uh, discouraged ever by uh, the people who are joining you online and by the numbers. See, wildlife is getting popular every day, but people who are participating for wildlife or watching for wildlife are not there for wildlife. Most of them are actually promoting themselves on social media by clicking the photographs, as I always say. And I, I'm still with that. People like to call themselves as a wildlifer. People like to call them as a birder and all those things. But it is just to get more like and their personal brand on social media and in society. They just care a hang about actual knowing, knowing wildlife, what is wildlife in first place. And my full... Uh, what you can just support as well as congrats, as well as wishes to three of you, Jungle Bells, means Arti and Emangi and Akanksha, because you are doing what actually wildlifers should do. So let, and this, 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 I'm deliberately speaking on this. This is not part of Thanksgiving officially, but it is part of Thanksgiving also, because you should not get discouraged. The challenges question I deliberately asked to Akanksha, basic challenge in any aspect related to wildlife, may it be a roadkill, may it be awareing women about the wildlife. Basic challenge is making masses know what wildlife means and not just what wildlife is. And you can't show it by photographs. It, 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 it will, they will only understand it by such kind of dialogues and communication, which we should keep on doing relatively. See, and it will test three of your patients. That is the real challenge. And, 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 and I'm sure uh, it will it will be true. So a uh, very important aspect, uh, really appreciate uh, Jungle Bell and Akanksha taking this particular aspect because see, whenever we go to forest and road kills, as I say, always is not part of only forest, more road kills happens outside of the, not only normal habitat, but on even uh, outside of our metros also where uh, four-wheeler traffic is much more, heavy vehicle traffic is much more. And uh, the basic problem is about data. And data, we will we, we uh, see, we collect data only of those things about which we care, about which we can have some commercial gain, and from which we can have our interest tied up with. Unfortunately, there is no such thing tied up with how many animal dies on uh, highways, rather it's a disturbing for humans. So the Akansha, my answer, which I know the system better uh, because I've seen that system. Uh, basically, my answer to your data thing is government or most of the people don't want such data that how many animal dies uh, under the tires of our cars. So uh, let us let us hope for the good that more and more data will be collected, more and more people will be sensibly driving on the roads. Till then, our fight goes on and uh, 
I I I will appeal to Jungle Bell also make YouTube uh, 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 link of this particular conversation reach to every person, not just to wildlife for uh, all this because those who care for wildlife they will be anyway caring, but uh, to make people understand uh, what wildlife conservation is, road kills is very important aspect of a uh, conservation. As tigers or any animals doesn't know boundaries or parks and sanctuaries, they can roam around freely and they don't understand this is highway. Uh, they have to watch left and right before crossing the road and all those things. So we are the humans. We should uh, understand what they want from us and accommodate them in our lifestyle. That should be the motto. And I, I wish on personal note, as well as on behalf of Jungle Bell and Sanjivani, all wishes to Akanksha and her team for making people aware about road kills of wild animals. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sanjay. I think Akansha has uh, dropped off, although I can see her here, but she just messaged me saying she lost power and so she probably is not uh, online at this point. But sure. yeah, thank you again, Akansha, and thank you to all our viewers. If anybody has any questions, uh, you can please uh, email them to uh, Akansha. Her um, email ID is uh, akansha13. 13.work, W O R K, at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, you want any uh, clarifications, or you want to help her uh, in this project of hers in any way, please uh, email her. Again, it's A K A N S H A 13.work, W O R K, at gmail.com. So uh, Thank you, viewers, and we uh, hope to you know keep bringing you interesting topics like this one. And uh, let's you know all work towards conserving my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.